Hello, Masaka Universe. What an interesting semi final we had. Everything is finally in balance at the moment. We may get an all German final. We may get Kylian Mbappé facing his future employer in the final. We could get a replay of the Corona final. We could also get Dortmund against Real Madrid. Relatively unlikely. To me, for the Champions League, just looking at this background here, I'm actually quite well equipped, except I've only two Dortmund jerseys. And of course, Dortmund is the only team that one decided i think the yellow up there is a little bit better and i'm wearing the away jersey but i guess wouldn't be a bad idea to get another Dortmund jersey what do you think yeah have to see what i can do maybe for the return like i have already something achieved there but yeah as i said uh it was really interesting i have to say i, I like the tuesday match you could see there's more quality there there were more goals but i think yesterday's match was more intense there were less goals but i felt there were more chances in there which is kind of weird but you can def definitely tell that the better players are between Bayern Munich and Real Madrid and whoever will come out of that semi-final should be considered the favorites in the final, that's for sure. Also, we saw a great showcase for German football. I mean, uh, the Bayern fans with their nice uh, Kaiser Franz choreography uh, there, that was already quite emotional, I have to say. And then the Dortmund fans make the yellow wall full with yellow and black flags, which also look pretty impressive. The only thing I don't understand why they're throwing streamers when they get caught in the net and then you have these unsightly things the whole time that doesn't make much sense to me but you know I'm not an ultra I'm just a regular football fan so maybe there's something that I'm missing let's talk about Bayern and Real Madrid because coming out of this I feel that Bayern probably should have won this game. They had definitely more of the game, they had better chances. But you could also see the class of Real Madrid. Real Madrid is a true chameleon. Very, very comfortable. Being in their own shell and then lashing out when it is necessary. And that's exactly what happened in this game. I mean, the first 20 minutes was all Bayern. It was all Bayern. There were really good chances in. And I think Sané needs to put one away better. I think there was one good shot by Kane. No, one shot in a good position by Kane, but not a good shot. Uh, where Lunin had an easy save, should have been probably placed better than another one that went over, over the bar. And, the, uh, you know, after the third or fourth, I thought, yes, uh, Bayern are creating chances, but it's kind of still relatively comfortable. Uh, it was not comfortable for Real Madrid overall because Bayern did create these chances and they tried to hit uh, with their speedy Musiala and Leroy Sané and having the threat of Kane in the center. But then they could calm down the game. And then it was, it, I mean, it's such a brilliant attack uh, where you can, can see that Vinny Jr. is kind of making a run towards the center where uh, Toni Kroos has the ball. And just cuts back, leaves Kim, who went with him, completely in the center of it. There's ample of space, and exactly in that moment, Tony Cross plays a deep ball. And of course, I mean, uh, there are other pictures where Tony Cross is actually pointing where Vinny Schultz would go. That's the first one. The second one, you can see already Eric Dyer. Yeah, there needs to be someone. Kimmich doesn't know where he is because in the middle of nowhere. It was a really well taken goal and yes, I wonder if Neuer shouldn't have come out a little bit sooner uh, to meet Vinny because it was a relatively easy finish then for, 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 for Vinny and I would expect that a goalie of Neuer's quality might actually do something there. But yeah, it's, that's just some minor things. Uh, this was a shock. Because this literally came out of nowhere. It was also kind of a little bit weird because uh, Uli Hoen has always said that Tony Cross is only passing sideways and then he makes this brilliant cutting pass in there. It is war, but what it is. On the other side, I have to give credit to Bayern who made... Yes, they could not really handle Vinny Jr. and Rodrigo all that well, who are the two uh, players in transition, but they completely quieted down Bellingham. Bellingham actually had to leave the field midway through the second half. That says a lot. Uh, Bayern were also that they had to play Thomas Müller up front, but I think this didn't really hurt uh, either way. So, so that was a little shock for Bayern, but then uh, they found themselves big by beginning, but never that dangerous as they were in the first half. But come the second half, Bayern came out. But uh, before I had to say it, because they, they, they really tried to turn it around. But there was an Antonio Cross chance where Neuer makes a good save on on there, and you know just the right come coming off the half, there was a two nil in there for Real Madrid. 
So I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying Real Madrid didn't deserve what they got out of this because they were taint and it was just that the initiative was a little bit more with Bayern Munich. And then Bayern Munich really struck very, 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 very quickly. Also a teeny bit out, out of nowhere, a Lima plays a ball to Sané who then runs into the box, unleashes a shot and it's 1-1. And that's all the Bayern needed. And a little bit later on, uh, Lucas Vasquez dangles out the lazy leg. It's a foul on Musiala. Penalty given and Harry Kane tucks that one away relatively easy. So it's 2-1 for Bayern Munich. And I think the overall feeling, unless probably that if you're Madridista was, I guess that's the correct result. Because Bayern were so much more. But then uh, Bayern also did not manage to break down Real Madrid. I think if they make a third, they definitely have, 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 have that advantage. But you know, one little advantage, probably just about all right. In the end, uh, it is again Kim who wrestles down Rodrigo needlessly. Absolutely needlessly. And you know, a little bit over eager the defending. Uh, and I don't want to pin it all on Kim. Or, or, but he made two uh, grave defensive errors that allowed Real Madrid to score two goals. Vinny Jr. against Neuer also. No other problem. Convert everything and it ends with a 2-2 two -two draw that leaves everything uh, seemingly in balance. Although at the Bernabeu you would think that Madrid will be a little bit more outgoing in a way. But yeah, no, we have to see. As I said, this Real Madrid is a chameleon. They can play on the front foot, which they do mostly in La Liga. But they can they are also, as, as we've seen in Manchester, they can also defend rather well. So uh, this one... I would give the slight advantage to Real Madrid, and you see the, the my model, which is based on the current ratings, favors Real Madrid now with 64% of going through, which feels right. Um, I still wouldn't cut up Bayern, Bayern Munich, because I think they have a lot of class. The one thing that should have every Bayern fan worried is uh, the Bayern backline against Rodrigo and Vinny Jr. I think this is the one one thing where you really have, have, to, have to work. Can you contain these guys? Because that's the speed that Bayern can, can, cannot handle. If they cannot manage that, then Real Madrid will go through. However, if uh, Bayern manage the other way around to really trouble Real Madrid, we'll see. As I said, it's all open. However, slight advantage I would give to Real Madrid. Which gets us to the second semi-final. Um, I think every, everyone would agree it's in a way the lesser one of the two because you know Dortmund have won advanced PSG are still trying to, 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 to win it. Both of these teams were over on this season, not very convincing, but neither was Bayern to be honest. So it's kind of a last ditch effort. And yeah, Dortmund play at home against PSG. Uh, those were the two survivors of the group of death F, which tells you how good this group actually was. And yes, the luck of the draw played a big role there as well. Similar to Bayern, I think Dortmund KK came, came out to fight, but I also thought that it was a little bit of lackluster performance, or especially in the first half where uh, PSG was a little bit too much in their shell. I also felt that they didn't play Dembele in the right position. He was too central in, in a way where he was rather in, 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 in ineffective. And whenever he had a run, I mean, there was uh, Adeyemi, surprisingly there to really run him down so Ademi doing a great job there as well um, also everyone kind of was afraid that with the speed of Mbappé uh, and Dembele and Barcola that the backline for Dortmund will be caught out far from it they never allowed the space they always hung back that there was enough space there they frustrated Mbappé so much that he could barely could ever find a run behind Hunter that he, he needed to come in the center and he's not a playmaker and for me, especially in the first half, it was so obvious that again the problem for P uh, for PSG is that Mbappé in the Champions League is a non-factor. Maybe that's a little bit too strong. I agree. I would agree with that statement. But he was largely ineffective, especially in the first half. And Dortmund created chances. There were good ones there. I think a really good, good one. But some of them probably should have been better. Uh, and I would say the first 50, 50 minutes, it was definitely an advantage Dortmund. Of course, with by, 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 the, by the crowd. Sancho also a running riot on PSG's defense. PSG's defense is also one that could, could be called out. And very early on was also that uh, Lucas Hernandez um, seemed like he got a knock. 
and will not be able to uh, play a little bit longer, which may have them played into the big action in the first half. I mean, PSG, I think by the 20th minute, had settled the game down. And were trying to be proactive themselves a little bit, but were rather ineffective with it because um, Dortmunds were working hard to keep all the speedy youngsters or speedy stars uh, contained. And it also affected, I think, that Hakimi and Dembele, former B uh, Dortmund players, they definitely uh, got the brunt of the anger of the crowd as well. I understand it for Dembele, I'm not so sure about Hakimi, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, I, I didn't follow it at, at the time, how acrimonious that split was. In any case, PSG was a little bit more going forward, and that's exactly when Nico Schlotterbeck plays a deep ball onto Fulkrug. With a great first touch, he controls the ball, makes two steps, a uh, little starter step in there, and then fully hit, 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 hit it on. Lucas Ananas wants to block it, but you can see he is a little bit in injured there, wants to get in it and injures himself as well in that action. And it's needed to come off a little bit later, and for good may makes it 1 0. Um, I do also wonder again, goalie a little bit about Don 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 Aruma. The shot was great and the the, act, the action was great as well, but he's a far out and then he cannot reach the ball. I mean, he was hit low and hard. I mean, again, small margins, but still, it didn't feel right. That rattled PSG a little bit, uh, but they made it into half with 1-0. And then second, second half, they come out flying. I think the first 50 minutes, they put them then, then, then in the right position. Uh, Beraldo had, had come on for uh, Lucas Hernandez. And then I think for 15 minutes, PSG really went all out. And of course, there was a big action where first Kylian Mbappé with hits from his pos uh, position at the right post and it bounces back, 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 back to him. Where uh, then the ball falls to Dembele, who it's the left post from. The inside it goes to, to the right. Then Dembele had, had another chance. Uh, a good one in there. I think Marquinhos had one. Then Fabian Ruiz with a free header. Probably should have been 1 1 at that point. However, then there's again Fulgrug having one chance and another chance. And another. So after the 60th minute, there was, I think, a 10 minute period where Fulgrug could have had a hat trick. And uh, I think all the chances that he had were that easier to take than the goal that he actually took, which I find really, really interesting uh, there. So, uh, if, and then the game fizzled out, I would say a slight advantage towards the end PSG, but overall the game was then very level and it ends with a 1-0 win for Dortmund. Slight advantage and this Dortmund side is really curious because in the Bundesliga they are not that solid. However, they have a Champions League phase. And honestly, I have a feeling that Dortmund have kind of given up a little bit on the Bundesliga, which is damning to say, but I really sometimes get the feeling that because Leverkusen was so far, far ahead, and then later on, same thing for, for Bayern, that they said, yeah, we won't be able to catch them. Let's focus on European glory. And that's what, what they did. And it also means that with that win, Germany... Made it, po uh, made it impossible for England to catch a fifth Champions League spot. It is most likely going out now, out now, out to Bundesliga, although we have to see what France, OM and PSG are, are doing. But this was a big one. Uh, I think the Bundesliga will most likely have five teams in the Champions League, which also means Dortmund will get in because they're in a relatively safe fifth position. So, just interesting facts. As I said, overall, I think this one, this ties very much in, in the balance. I would favor PSG at home. My model, though, gives uh, Boris Dortmund a really sizable advantage. And I'm. Uh, it's very contrary to the bookmakers who see uh, still PSG very much in favor. I honestly think it's because the ratings that uh, I've been using, especially the ELA the e rating, there is not much different between difference between PSG and Dortmund. And that so Dort, that the uh, two teams are much more level than uh, proper with the overall perception in the booking market is. I think you can call them Mbappé factor because you know best player of the, of the world, great frontline. I think uh, PSG a sexier side. Uh, in the general opinion than Dortmund are. That's for sure, I would say. Any case, let me know your thoughts on the Champions League. Who do you think will be in the final? I am really on a limb. I think... I think Real Madrid and PSG. Although, I honestly, if you would were to ask me, 
that's not the final I necessarily want to see. I actually think a Bayern PSG final would be way more interesting. But uh, that's my opinion. I want to know who do you think will be in the final in London. Uh, of course, Real Madrid against PSG. This is the one that everyone, this will be the Mbappé final. That's for sure. But I think that Bayern against PSG, the rematch and, and, and so on, I think there's a whole lot more in there. Uh, it's, of course, it's with the old German final, but I don't want to see an old German final. And I don't necessarily want to see Real Madrid against Dortmund. Although maybe another goal could fall. That's a reference for you. Any case, let me know your thoughts. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.